NFTs can generate insane amounts of passive income. Just recently, CyberKong's holders were earning $800 a day by holding a single NFT. Now, of course, these NFTs are now very expensive. However, they are originally priced at 0.1 ETH or a few hundred dollars each. That's the price point that you want to get in at. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to share with you five ways that NFTs can earn passive income, including staking your NFTs, NFT dollar drops, NFT renting, mining, and NFT profit sharing. And then I'm going to give an example of a project that uses each of those methods to earn passive income. The first type is what I'm calling NFT dollar drops. Now, I came up with this term because I haven't come across a better name for this method yet. So if this term picks up steam, you know where you heard it first. Basically, all this works is an NFT project will launch alongside a native token. NFT holders are then rewarded a certain number of tokens on a regular basis simply for holding that NFT. Usually it's done daily. This can be very profitable if the NFT token takes off in price. An example of this, and by no means is this a recommendation to buy, is BearX, a collection of 3,700 Genesis bears. By owning a BearX NFT, holders get 10 root tokens a day, which at current prices is about $10. This means by holding five BearX NFTs, that's about $50 a day, but this can change at any time depending on the current price of the root token. If you could manage to purchase five Barracks NFTs on the low end, you'd be paying anywhere between $10,000 and $12,000, and this would generate about $1,500 a month, which is a pretty insane ROI. Now, again, income on Barracks is subject to the price of the root token, which could be a little bit concerning. The volume on the chart looks very poor, and the price is continuing to decrease. So just be careful before aping yourself into any new project because there are plenty of cool projects like this one that you can earn money off of. One thing you'll notice about this collection is they say on their homepage, Root is made as an extension to the BearX ecosystem and is a utility token, but predominantly built for fun. It is not investment, has no economic value. This shows me that the BearX creators are well aware of OpenSea's terms of service regarding passive income with NFTs. And it's really important that you understand what I mean here. Regulators may begin to consider income earning NFTs as investment securities. In the US, according to the Supreme Court, anything that meets these four criteria under the Howey rule are considered an investment security. First, the existence of an investment contract. Second, the formation of a common enterprise. Third, a promise of profits by the issuer. And finally, use of a third party to promote an offering. This means NFTs could be considered securities, especially if they offer passive income. And because of this, OpenSea forbids any NFT project that advertises paying out real passive income to its holders. Now, this isn't a legal issue. OpenSea simply just doesn't want to deal with the bureaucracy of the SEC in case there is an official decision made down the road against passive income with NFTs. So for now, it's a bit of a gray area and you need to proceed with caution. And none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes only. All right. Now that it's only degenerates watching past this point. Let's just go ahead and continue, shall we? Because the second type of passive income through NFTs is profit sharing. And this is really interesting. NFT projects make money through direct sales and through royalties on future trades. And certain NFT projects will share this income with NFT holders as a kind of thanks for being a member and an incentive to stay a holder because you keep making money. Now, what's really interesting is passive income with NFTs can allow you to minimize the typical risk that comes with investing in NFTs. Now, what I mean is if you earn enough passive yield by simply holding your NFT, you may be able to collect enough rewards and sell them off to cover the original cost of your NFT. And that's kind of the big brain method because then you're not worried about the immediate price because you already recouped your entire investment. Now, one project that does profit sharing is called Noia Ducks. They're a collection of 1,000 NFTs, which to me kind of looks like crypto punks with ducks. Honestly, it's a little bit unoriginal, but either way, they caught my eye when I saw a tweet about the project's generous 100% royalty and 51% profit sharing from the marketplace. And because they have such a low supply of only 1,000 ducks, profit and royalty sharing will be higher than your typical 10,000 unit NFT collection. But of course, this depends on volume traded. The average NFT here is selling for around $3,000, so it doesn't take much for the community to earn some pretty good income. Now, another thing that I want to point out is how to examine whether a project is bullish or not. So here's a few questions that you should ask yourself. What is their history with hitting deadlines on development and the roadmap of the project? Is the team taking community feedback seriously? And if so, how? And finally, is the sentiment in the community generally happy or do people seem upset and confused or is there an overwhelming amount of fun? NFTs can be really volatile if something goes wrong in a project and this can just crash the value. If you're gonna invest in passive income earning NFT projects, not saying you should, but if, make sure you're doing your research and staying 
active daily within the project's Discord, because this will help you ensure you don't miss anything important if you have to sell. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of opportunities, so there's no point in investing in a stinker that is stressing you out. I'll have my free NFT checklist linked in the description for a good starting point. Something else you may be interested in is a better place to buy and sell NFTs. This is because I have partnered with FTX, who just expanded their NFT platform in a big way. And the reason I happily partnered with them is not only because I'm a huge SBF fanboy, but because they're making huge improvements within this space. The reason that this is special is because of gas fees. I've bought NFTs in the past, and it always kills me to pay $50 plus just to make the transaction. FTX allows you to buy Ethereum NFTs with no gas fees on bidding, buying, selling, or listing NFTs, and platform fees are 20% lower than OpenSea. They're able to do this by offering in-house custody of assets, which also offers great security. FTX is actually the only platform that allows you to purchase both Ethereum and Solana NFTs in one single place, and they're also the first open NFT marketplace to allow mobile trading on their FTX app. I'll have them linked in the description below. The next form of passive income is through NFT staking. So certain projects will have a dashboard built that allows you to lock up or stake your NFT in order to be rewarded in that project's native token. This is very similar to the dollar drop method that we mentioned earlier with an additional step of staking. Again, this is smart because it incentivizes people both to buy and hold longer term instead of continually flipping their NFTs. One project that does this is Wolf's NFT. Well, currently they don't have a website. They do have a strong community and high engagement on their Twitter. Owners of Wolf's will be able to stake their NFTs in order to earn AWU tokens every day. Sometimes I wonder what I'm doing with my life reporting on a AWU token. The next form of passive income through NFTs is through mining. This is a really interesting one. So essentially how it works is you would buy an NFT, stake that NFT, and then you receive your portion of a server's mining rewards for staking that NFT. So it's kind of like buying a share in a crypto mining company through an NFT, except I'm sure that they have to legally say they do not offer an expected return on investment, otherwise they would fall into that investment security territory. Now one project that's doing this is called Enigma Economy NFT. They're a mining collection that will mine Bitcoin and Ethereum Ethereum according to their roadmap. This means instead of being paid in an NFT's native token, like a woo, you'll be paid in Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever a project is mining. For Enigma, the amount of Ethereum mined per NFT depends on the rarity traits of the NFT that you purchased. And also the earnings that you're making are going to change, of course, depending on the price of Ethereum or whatever you're mining. So let's say the price of Ethereum stays at $4,000 and you're earning at the low end of half an ETH per year with your Enigma Economy NFT, which is $2,000 per year. To earn $57 a day with NFTs, you need to be making about $1,700 a month. To make close so this amount with these NFTs, you would need to own 10 of them. 10 of these at the cheapest price, which is 0.25 ETH, would cost around $11,750 for something that makes you $20,000 per year doing nothing. That's not a bad potential investment. However, again, this space is very new and very volatile, so don't ever expect best case scenarios. Now, the last type of passive income I want to discuss is renting your NFT, specifically through play to earn games. With many play to earn games, you have to buy an expensive NFT up front in order to then play the game and start actually making money with that game. Once a game becomes popular, these NFTs can get really expensive. And because of this, a new market has cropped up. And this actually might be my favorite version of passive income on this entire list, NFT renting. You, you see what I'm getting at here. So you can own an NFT that others want to use in a game, and you can start earning money by renting it out. Vulcan Forge is a game that will allow exactly this to be possible. Land in the Vulcanverse is an NFT. This land is needed for players to unlock new assets. Those who can't afford to buy NFT land within the Vulcanverse will need to rent it. Those people who rent the land can then play the game and actually start making money from the game. And this is important because on the Vulcan Forge marketplace, some of the land is insanely expensive selling for 845 PYR tokens, or about $32,000. So as crazy as it is to buy or rent digital land that costs $32,000, like as much as some real land, this is one of my favorite methods for NFT passive income because it's so easy to grasp. You know, renting assets is already a thing. If I wanna, if I wanna go drive a tank down my street, I'm gonna rent a tank because I definitely don't want to keep up with tank maintenance myself. So the key to earning passive income with NFTs will be doing a massive amount of research up front to ensure all the boxes are checked. You want to ensure there's a solid team, a solid idea, and a solid community behind the project to help hedge your downside risk. And if all of that work sounds like 
too much work. You can always just stick to good old yield farming altcoins or lending out your crypto. In fact, I just did a video on how to get the best possible rates when lending out your crypto that you definitely need to check out next. I'll have this clickable on the end screen. So we sure live in the best time ever to make money. This is pretty darn exciting. And if you want even more money making content and access to my portfolios, check out my Patreon community linked in the description for as little as $10 a month. And I would just like to thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.